Félix González Torres. A video essay. Gonzalez Torres moved to New York City in 1979 to pursue a BFA in photography. New York. New York. Big dreams. Big dreams. New York, my good love. Oh my good love. This clip is courtesy of Universidad de Puerto Rico and features early footage of Gonzalez Torres discussing memory, self portrait, and, in this clip, a tongue in cheek sensual encounter with the idea of New York City and the machinations of the video camera and some mirrors either just before or right after arriving in the city to begin his studies at the Pratt Institute and with the Whitney Independent Study Program. This short film acts as our entryway into the brilliance of this Cuban-born American visual artist. <laughs> love in New York. <laughs> love, love, like, dreams, dreams, promises, promises, promise, promise. <laughs> New York, New York. New York, New York. New York, New York. A mirror is used to show us the reality of the camera, the New York dream thrust into sharp, objectified relief. Gonzalez Torres talks of romance not knowing the partnership to come that would shape the rest of his visual archive. <laughs> this video essay focuses on the micro-materiality of the conceptual, visual, and installation art of Gonzalez Torres. Throughout his career, Gonzalez Torres's involvement in social and political causes as an openly gay man fueled his interest in the overlap of private and public life. From 1987 to 1991, he was part of Group Material, a New York-based art collective whose members worked collaboratively to initiate community education and cultural activism. His aesthetic project was, according to some scholars, related to Brecht's theory of epic theater, in which creative expression transforms the spectator from an inert receiver to an active, reflective observer, and motivates social action. Employing simple, everyday materials, stacks of paper, puzzles, candy, strings of lights, beads, and a reduced aesthetic vocabulary reminiscent of both minimalism and conceptual art to address themes such as love and loss, sickness and rejuvenation, gender and sexuality, Gonzalez Torres asked viewers to participate in establishing meaning in his works. This essay considers three aesthetic gestures in everyday mediums, fabric with light, clocks with time, and candy with presence. Rather than focusing only on the installations as they exist in stage galleries and museums, I hope to open the senses to the objects used in the work of Gonzalez Torres, honing in on the materiality of the love for his partner Ross Laycock, the sensuality of the body in bits, and the future of this work as it is restaged. Artist bio, 
courtesy of the Guggenheim Collection Online. Oh, hi. Uh, yeah, uh, this is my desk. We'll be here quite often throughout the essay. Oh, and I guess we should develop some sort of pathos? Ethos? Wait, something's showing up? ¿Dónde tú crees que estoy? Este soy yo. Esta es la cámara. Este soy yo. Este soy yo. Esta es la cámara. Este soy yo. Esta es la cámara. Este soy yo. ¿Ves la cámara? ¿Ves la cámara? Este soy yo. Esta es la cámara. Este soy yo. Este soy yo. Esta es la cámara. Esta es la cámara. Este soy yo. Este eres tú. Este soy yo. Este soy yo. Esta es la cámara. ¿Ves la cámara? Esta es la cámara. Este soy yo. Esta es la cámara. Este soy yo. I think we need to look more into photography, and maybe puzzles. Looking at a visual chronology of González Torres's works shows a clear move from photography into the world of prints embedded into sculpture. His first untitled jigsaw puzzles are from 1987 and continue through 1988 with a piece entitled Lover Boy, a recurring title in his collected works depicting Ross Laycock. It is this shift from static portrait into the fragile precarity of image spliced into puzzle that Gonzalez Torres's work ignites questions of presence. Bodies are cast into purposeful pieces. Beginning in 1989, he fashions sculptures of stacks of paper, often printed with photographs or texts, and encourages viewers to take the sheets. The impermanence of these works, which slowly disappear over time unless they are replenished, symbolizes the fragility of life. 1989 also sees the beginning of his work with sheer curtains, forcing viewers to reckon with light weather, and the presence in and outside of the gallery space they are in. The late 80s also houses the timeline of the Perfect Lover series, two clocks hung side by side, ticking until the batteries run out. It is in 1990, however, that sees González Torres move into, arguably, his most famous works. Candy Spills Either a pile which represents the ideal weight of his partner Ross, or a pile which combines their two weights. The pieces I discuss next, in near order of their conception, can trace their origin back to the photographic quandary proposed in the short film from 1979. Este la cámara. Este soy yo. This is the camera. This is me. All at the same time. This simultaneity of the body, of the material self, existing as the portrait, forms González Torres's focus on the materiality of life and death in his work. While ephemeral, precarious, fragile, life is still material. A puzzle? Maybe. But it's a puzzle we can touch. Without moving into Gonzalez Torres's beaded curtain work, the simple curtains of sheer blue fabric covering the windows of a gallery or museum space of untitled Lover Boy showcases the exquisitely soft touch of his sculptural forms. Quote, Primarily an accessory for the space, this installation refuses to dominate its environment. Rather, it nestles into the existing features of the room. Like his wall portraits or candy spills, the curtains merely map onto the structures already present. Perhaps, if the windows can open, then the curtains can respond to that feature of the space. By resisting dramatic displays of size or color or shape, they transform such spaces through negation announcing what's not there." End quote. In terms of material, sheer blue fabric gives way to the simultaneous presence and absence. Loverboy, as a title, and the undulating fabric in the air implicates audiences to think of Ross and his diagnosis of HIV 
and the air that is caught in the fabric. Curtains remind us of domesticity, the breeze, the bedroom, a sense of rest, a causeway for change, a hospital, a hotel passing through. Let us think more deeply of the material of sheer blue curtain, its texture, its grit, its finely woven threads, its roughness in spite of the smooth shapes it makes when billowed with air. These contradictions of presence add to Gonzalez Torres's use of such material. Light passes through, but shadows do form. Quotation from Hostility to Hospitality by Taylor Worley Untitled Perfect Lovers 1991 is one of Gonzalez Torres's most famous works. It consists of two clocks that start in synchronization. Slowly and expectedly, they fall out of time. This is caused by running out of batteries, as well as the nature of the clock's mechanisms. I'm interested in batteries dying, the humble mumble of the clocks ticking, and the feeling of the cheap commercial clock hands reverberating into my fingers. To touch the clock, to see, not just see it mirrored, but to actually caress the clock as it subtly touches another. It is this material intimacy of two gay lovers falling out of sync due to fate or AIDS-related death or state oppression. But why do we fear such a material representation of time? What happens when we reach out and trace the temporal paths outlined by Gonzalez Torres and cradle the clock like he does Ross with a letter? Lovers 1988 Don't be afraid of the clocks. They are our time. Time has been so generous to us. We imprinted time with the sweet taste of victory. We conquered fate by meeting at a certain time in a certain space. We are a product of the time, therefore we give back credit where it is due. Time. We are synchronized, now and forever. I love you. While Gonzalez Torres is known for the aesthetic gesture of the candy spill, the grandiose pile in its entirety, I would like to take some time to sit with the taste, sounds, and touch of candy. This clip will only last as long as this candy remains undissolved in my mouth.
materiality of the candy installations designed by Gonzalez Torres does exist in its grand sweeping gesture of the spill. In fact, with every gallery that shows a candy spill, hours are spent hand placing and weighing candy to the correct weight. In the case of Portrait of Ross in LA from 1991, it is exactly 175 pounds, which is his lover's ideal weight as he begins losing weight from AIDS-related complications. Viewers are asked to take a piece of candy as they pass by, lowering the total weight until it is replenished every day. Countless hands centrally engaging with bits of Ross on a daily basis, either for pleasure or for the upkeep of the installation. But the touch and taste of the candy is where I feel the future of this work. We move now into contemporary restagings of Felix Gonzalez Torres's work. The Dead Taste Sweeter Than the Living After Felix Gonzalez Torres by Emilio Rojas is a performance that has three main parts a movement piece that focuses on grief and mourning, a meditation which involves the separation of over 23,000 candies into colors, and then using the candies themselves to write pieces from the archive of Felix Gonzalez Torres, and texts from the HIV archives interviews. You can't catch it. After the shoot, my fear is your fear. Such a restaging of Gonzalez Torres's ephemera offers a fresh look at the sheer materiality of his collected works. Candy as text, bodies speaking only when candies are left on tongues, and time condensed away from two clocks, and into the durational performance of collecting one piece from the pile every day for 18 months. What happens? If we truly are unafraid of the clocks and take time passing through the curtains, allowing ourselves to feel every bead. 